Hello and welcome to Quality of Life. Today we're going to talk about neighborhood associations and how they can contribute to the well-being in the community. And today joining us is Nancy Mearing from City Development and Diane Wozinski from Sheboygan Neighborhood Association. Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, excuse mm -hmm. me. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, to start out with, could you each you know, tell us a little bit about yourselves and you know, how long you've been in the positions you're at? Sure. Go ahead. I'm the Neighborhood Development Planner with the City of Sheboygan. I've lived in Sheboygan for a year, so I've been in that position for a year. I work in the, as you said, the Department of mm -hmm. City Planning and Development. Um, and I'm also a board member with Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, so I work closely with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Being new to the city, it probably gives you know, a fresh set of eyes, a new look as far as how things work and learning that way, so it probably even helps you in your position. Definitely, yeah. Cool. Diane, how about you? I'm the uh, current president of Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride of the Board of Directors, and I've been on SNP for a couple of years now, and this is my first year as president um, of the board, and I'm also a board member of Ellis Historic Neighborhood District. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> Excuse me, to start out with, what is a neighborhood association? You know, what, what, what does it make up, and what other types of neighborhood groups already exist in the city? Well, a neighborhood association is a geographically based partnership between uh, different stakeholders within the neighborhood. So that would include owners, homeowners, uh, renters, landlords, business people, the people who lease the businesses, the business owners, um, faith-based groups, churches, schools, mm -hmm. nonprofits, anyone who has a stake in that neighborhood can, should, can and should be involved in the associations. Um, and associations are officially recognized by the city, but Sheboygan has multiple kinds of neighborhood groups at work. So we have groups that are just beginning, just holding their initial meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we also have groups who meet regularly, who are working toward goals and who are working up toward that association status, but they're not quite there yet, but they still are doing great work. So we have a range in Sheboygan. Okay. And currently there are three recognized neighborhoods in the city, it's Ellis, Gateway, and Near North, which is the most it's recent. North Flats. North Flats, excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay. North Flats, which has just recently been um, organized as status of its official association. Okay. From a geographical standpoint, where do those neighborhoods lie in the city, around by, or if there's some landmarks near of it? Well, Ellis Historic is just east of downtown near the lake. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, North then Gateway is easy to notice. Uh, when you come into the city, you see the, their great community garden, and it's right off of um, Erie uh, Avenue, which mm -hmm. is a main thoroughfare in the city. Um, it's just north of that. Okay. And then actually North Flats is just north of that. So they're all kind of centered in the middle of the city. Okay, wonderful, because I've always wondered, you know, I hear North Flats, and, you know, being new to the concept myself, it's like, okay, where is North Flats? I try to figure it out. You know, you give them names, but where does it fit geographically? So thank exactly. you for clarifying that. Sure. Uh, where do I go to look, or how do I know what neighborhood I'm actually belong in? And with that, how do I know if my neighborhood is organized or if an association has been developed? How would I find that out? Sure, there's actually a few different ways to figure that out. Um, the police department actually originally split the city up into over 70 different neighborhoods. And they did this because they do community policing. So each neighborhood mm -hmm. has officers, neighborhood officers assigned to those neighborhoods. So you can go to SheboyganPolice.com, which is the police website, and find a map of all of the neighborhoods in Sheboygan so you can see where you fall within, mm -hmm. what neighborhood you belong to. Um, you can also visit the SNP website, which is SheboyganNeighborhoodPride.info. And we're working right now on getting neighborhood maps for the different neighborhoods that are in the middle of organizing or that have become associations onto that website. So you can find that there. On SheboyganNeighborhoodPride.info, you can also find meeting agendas, meeting notices, um, different meeting notes, mm -hmm. different information based on what sort of organization your neighborhood is doing. So you, there you can find out whether or not your neighborhood is being organized. Um, you can also call SP, mm -hmm. call me at City Development. I can answer any questions you might have. You can talk to your community uh, police officer. They could probably answer your questions too. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to get okay. that, those answers. Uh, on the back end of that, how do I know who my community policing officer is? You know, Again, with that, where do I go with a look? Is this all being tied together through multiple departments across the city, being involved with the 
organization or is it each standing alone and kind of talking together? Exactly. We we try, and especially with Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, they kind of act as, you know, a coordinator. Mm -hmm. We all work together for this effort, and we all believe neighborhoods are so important, and to, to strengthen neighborhoods, we all need to work together. So you can, you can find out who your neighborhood community officer is. You can call the non-emergency number at 459-3333, or you can... Um, Go to the website, actually, there's a whole listing. Okay. Right. So it's a good way to find out. Okay, wonderful. You're both members of Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, mm -hmm. so can you tell us <coughs> what is Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride? What is it all about and what does it do for our neighborhoods? Sure. Uh, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride is a or nonprofit organization that's really been in existence since about 2003, and it's made up of a variety of people from um, the religious groups of people, there are business owners, uh, landlords, etc. And it's really a mixture of people who really believe in Sheboygan and want to do better and make the neighborhoods even stronger and working together for, you know, for the, mm -hmm. for the business of Sheboygan and really making it safer and making it more productive and more prosperous. And um, the one thing that's unique about it also is because we have the direct link with the city and with Nancy and mm -hmm. with Chad Pelichek, who also attends our meetings, and the mayor also attends our meetings. And we also have police officers periodically that do attend also. So it's really a far-reaching group of people that go out and work with neighborhoods to get them going, um, help them from the startup point of, of setting up neighborhood meetings to taking them all the way to really becoming neighborhood associations, which is really the goal, is we want to establish more of the official neighborhood associations sure. in the city. Sure. Does the organization have full-time people that it employs, or is it no. volunteers it's only? it's all volunteers. How does that work? Right, it's all volunteers, yes. And yes. how would one, if they wanted to volunteer and help, how could they go about doing that? Well, if they want to become a member on the board, they certainly can go to the, the S&P website. Um, they can call Nancy or contact myself, and we can get them in touch with, um, you know, when our meetings are. We usually meet once a month. Mm -hmm. um, and they're open meetings, so that people are welcome open to, to come. Public. Absolutely, okay. to well, and we're always looking for members, people who really have an interest in their neighborhood and really want to improve their neighborhood and make it more effective. And working together on projects to strengthen that neighborhood, um, depending on wherever they are mm -hmm. in that process. And okay. not just their neighborhood. Anybody Others who's too. just interested mm -hmm. in seeing an improvement in the quality of life in Sheboygan, right? Who wants to help other neighborhoods mm -hmm. become mm -hmm. associations mm -hmm. too? Okay. With that being said, say I'm in a neighborhood and it's not really organized, you know, it's, it's there, we have neighbors and all of that. How would a neighborhood go about getting organized? Where would it go? And what does it mean to be organized? And what are the steps they would take? Well, I think one of the things they first need to, if, if I'm in a neighborhood that's not organized, mm -hmm. is to really to ask or think of some questions. You know, why do we want to organize? Is there an issue or is there something in that neighborhood that there's a, there's a problem? For example, is it um, you know cleanup or whatever? And then going out and getting to know your neighbors is probably the mm -hmm. best best first step because you really have to develop that core group of people who are interested in wanting to really improve that neighborhood. So even before you start thinking of becoming an association or of mm -hmm. even organizing, is going out, getting those neighbors, getting to know one another, talking about issues within the within that neighborhood, and what do we want to improve? You know, is it uh, a cleanup? Is it a community garden like Gateway has, which sure. was a very ambitious, you mm -hmm. know, endeavor that they had? But what do we want to do? Identifying our issues, and then how do we want to solve them? Developing those leadership skills within that cadre of people that can really move forward um, in, in taking that association or that neighborhood then to the next level. Okay. And you kind of touched on it already, but I'll still follow up with, what are the benefits you know, to a neighborhood by organizing and by that? I mean, how, how do we improve it and how does it improve the quality of life in that neighborhood? Well, there are a lot of benefits to organizing. Um, organizing a neighborhood gives a stronger voice to neighbors. That is an important benefit. Mm -hmm. A group of people who are all working toward the same goal um, have a much stronger voice than just one person speaking out. Um, so that that's important. Also, you you can develop a great relationship with the city, with the police department, with all different resources mm -hmm. and city departments. So that's another great mm -hmm. asset to becoming an association. Um, 
I, it, you can also uh, get involved with the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet and you can get, well, I'll talk more about, about mm -hmm. that later, but you can get resources that way and you can learn best practices from other neighborhoods so that we can support from within and make sure that all of our neighborhoods are getting better and better. I think one of the things also that um, to add to that is a neighborhood, if you really know your neighbors in that neighborhood, they kind of watch out for one another. So if you see something going on that's mm -hmm. not supposed to be going on in the neighborhood, you kind of can keep tabs on that and then either contact the police department or contact that neighbor if it's not your particular area that it's happening in. So you get that closer knit relationship. Okay. How long has the concept of neighborhood organizations been around? It's been a long time. Like I said, in Sheboygan, it's been since about 2003, mm -hmm. but I when this was organized here, we looked to other areas like Green Bay, for example, that has organized neighborhoods, and they've been in existence a lot longer. I couldn't even tell you how long, but okay, yeah, so a it's lot, been a lot while. This a lot of them have Madison concept. has, is, right? Yeah, it's a newer There's, concept in Sheboygan. Right, sure, right. Other neighborhoods mm -hmm. have been long mm -hmm. established. Yeah, excellent. Absolutely. Well, why reinvent the wheel if somebody yep, else is exactly. doing it successfully? So yep. that would make sense. So I'm going ahead. I want to form an organization or get my neighborhood organized, and let's see, I'm getting to there now, now I want to start to hold meetings, you know, form my structure. How do I go about doing that or choosing a location or holding the meetings and getting notification out? Okay, well once you know your neighbors and if you've got a core group that you want to set up a meeting, they should contact SNP. Um, we can give them some help in setting up the meetings, finding a location, um, contacting the police department to have those community officers there, contacting the city to have city representatives there. Uh, we can work out the agenda for that first meeting and help them run through that agenda so that they're more comfortable with it to really get it going and then to take them to the next level. So SNP is really that resource at the grassroots mm -hmm. to get those neighborhoods going on that first established meeting and then from there forward. Okay. And for our viewers and myself, SNP stands for? Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride. Okay, SNP. Okay. SNP, yes. Okay, thank you. I thought it was SNP. <laughs> Not a grocery store, <laughs> no, but Sheboygan SNP. Neighborhood Pride. Yeah, right. Very good, <laughs> thank you. Um, so with that being said, they have location mm -hmm. and everything, so we're good that way. So then, what does it take? I mean, from, is there a legal standpoint or through what channels do we go to get a neighborhood association to be legally recognized as an entity and to participate in the whole group of, you know, benefits and services and well, groups can meet for a long time without being associations, mm -hmm. and, and if they don't ever want to be an association, that's fine. We do, you know, encourage them to become an association for the benefits that we had mentioned before. Um, but if they want to become officially recognized by the city, there are some things that they have to do. They have to um, write bylaws, and that includes goals, and the SNP is here. Uh, to help them every step of the way. So this might sound kind of daunting, but it's really not because we're here to help and we have other neighborhoods to model after. So there's bylaws. You have to hold an all neighbor meeting, which means you have to invite every single neighbor in the boundaries of your mm -hmm. neighborhood. And you have to agree on the boundaries of your neighborhood. Um, you also have to agree on the name of your neighborhood. Uh, so th those were originally set by the police department, but a neighbor neighbors can change those if they, if they want to. So then you hold your all neighbor meeting, you elect board members, you bring it to the common council, and you, they accept your uh, association. So then you are an officially recognized association. After that, you can elect officers, like mm -hmm. a president, vice president, secretary, all of that. And then you can be represented on the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. Okay. So what benefits would my neighborhood get by forming a formal association? Well, like we said before, you get to be a member of the MNLC. Mm -hmm. You have the support of SNP, the city, the police department, everyone working together toward your common goals. You have common goals that are written out, a mission and a vision that are written out and agreed upon and established. So you have something to work toward. You have projects that you can brainstorm and we can help you with all of that too. Okay. Um, but there's something to work toward. You're all coming together for a positive common goal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have the association recognized. What happens next? How do I go from there? Well, after you become an official neighborhood, you get passed on to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. And, and what that is, the mayor, Mike Vandersteen, uh, mm -hmm. formed this cabinet. It's very new. We've only had a couple of meetings. We meet on odd months, which so January would be one. And so then mm -hmm. we would skip February and meet again in March. Um, and what happens is, 
it's meant for the associations to get together and share best practices best practices, Practice. what uh, projects they're working on, and what successes they've had, um, so they can hear from each other and, and help each other and learn. We also have speakers that at each meeting, uh, the last meeting we had the director of the, the Department of Public Works come and explain all of the things that Public Works does and the infrastructure in the city, so it's a great opportunity to learn more about city services. Mm -hmm. um, and. So you also get support from city staff, the chief of police, myself, Chad Domagowski, or Chad Palaszczuk, sure. the, um, the, the, well, yeah, the chief of police, I think okay. I said him. Okay. The mayor is there, everybody is there to support these neighborhoods, so you get the ear of all the city departments right there. Wonderful. Now, you had mentioned, Diane, earlier that it's nonprofit, mm -hmm. that s and mm -hmm. is nonprofit. So what's the main revenue generator, and by becoming a neighborhood association, does it cost the neighbors you know, yearly fees or dues or anything like that? There are no, not yearly dues per se, but the uh, SNP is really the fiscal agent for the neighborhoods, so they don't have to go out and establish a, you know, a, the nonprofit status. Mm -hmm. SNP has that, so then the neighborhoods are linked into that, and all the revenue that they make then is gotcha. run through SNP. And obviously, we, with, there's, a, there's a percentage per year that we sort of assess the neighborhoods, I guess is a way to say it, mm -hmm. that becomes our operating budget, but it's okay. a very minimal amount. Um, but that allows the neighborhoods then to function without having to worry about all those legal yep. issues and things as far as being a nonprofit. And the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet also has mm -hmm. grant opportunities, right. so that's another way for the mm -hmm. neighborhoods to get cash mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. the projects. Sure. Mm -hmm. do the so projects. that's a great asset too. Right. Mm -hmm. And actually SNP is the fiscal agent right now for the acuity grant that the police department got for the heroin, heroin initiative mm -hmm. in the city. So they're all the fiscal money and responsibilities is coming through SNP. Okay. When we form our neighborhood associations, you had mentioned they form bylaws and goals and all of that. Are the bylaws the same from neighborhood to neighborhood or are they a little different? They can vary. Um, I know ours at Ellis is a little bit different from what Gateway is. And actually we have a, a toolkit, so to speak, that gives you some templates of like bylaws and mm -hmm. how you set up meeting agendas and so on that people can reference. But you then have the opportunity to change those and adjust them according to your own neighborhood because we're not all the same. Okay. Okay. Does SNP also have bylaws? Yes, we do. Okay. Do they kind of r roll together? You know, they as far do. as they a roll do. up into a single thing, and where I'm coming from, this is for the city. We're doing a mission, <laughs> vision, and you know, core things to get also our um, strategic plans together, and we're doing that as well. So that's why I'm kind of asking the question as far as fishing around, as far as do all the neighborhood associations and then roll up into one. They're not. No, they're not exactly the same. You know, SNP's bylaws, if you look mm -hmm. at them, are are different, and okay. you know, from the neighborhoods, but they're the core of them is pretty much okay. the same, and what's in them is pretty much the same. We encourage the neighborhoods to, we started out the first couple neighborhood associations had really compli yeah. complicated <laughs> bylaws and they were complex and it was difficult for people to understand them. And what we want is for them to be simple and so that all the neighborhoods could, can get mm -hmm. involved and understand and right. they aren't intimidated by the bylaws or the process. So we have a template that's very simple that they can then build upon or change however they see fit to make mm -hmm. it appropriate for their neighborhood. Okay. You had mentioned MNLC mm -hmm. and SNP. What is the difference between okay. the two? Um, well, the Mayor's uh, Neighborhood Leadership Council, that's the MNLC, and that is a newer concept. That is about uh, not even a year old, not, or, even, right. not even a year old, so this is just a more recent thing. But I think the easiest way probably to say it is SNP will take the neighborhoods from when they're first starting to get together thinking about becoming an, an uh, association. Mm -hmm. So they'll be the grassroots to get them going, get them organized. And then once they're organized and established as an association, then it sort of gets turned over to the MNLC, who then provides the support and provides leadership opportunities to develop those leadership skills within those uh, established okay. organizations. Okay. So it's, we work very closely together, mm -hmm. but are two very separate entities. But it still sounds like it's a continuous flow. Yes, it is. You know, so it mm -hmm. sounds like a wonderful process as yeah. far as developing mm -hmm. you know, the neighborhood mm -hmm. resources, is. which is great. Right. Uh, could you go into more about some of the projects that are going on? in the neighborhoods? Okay, well some of the things that they've done, we've talked about the community mm -hmm. garden that Gateway has done, which has been very, very successful. Um, we've had neighborhood watch programs 
that have been going on out there. We've had neighborhood cleanups. I know in Ellis we've done that with neighborhood mm -hmm. cleanups. Uh, we've had projects like planting flowers around where the Ellis signs are, sure. you know, beautification type things. There have been block parties. Um, the, the National Night Out has involved the neighborhoods, those types of things mm -hmm. that we're doing. And the other one that we have that I think is very successful is when the, the city launched the nextdoor.com um, opportunity to link the neighborhoods also. Okay. Well, that leads us right into our next <laughs> question. As far as nextdoor.com, how do the neighborhoods use that mm -hmm. tool? Well, nextdoor.com is it's a third-party site. So we didn't build this site. It's not ours. It's being used nationally, but it's a social networking website that's private. So it's kind of similar to Facebook because you can post and message and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, but it's private because you have to prove where you live. They have a verification process. Um, and then in order to join your neighborhood, you have to prove that you live in that neighborhood. So you sign up and they tell you exactly what neighborhood you live in when you enter your address. You are verified and then you can go in and post on a wall similar to Facebook um, where you can also reply to other posts. You can keep it just to your neighborhood or you can see other neighborhoods around in the city that are posting. We have almost a thousand people in the city who are using nextdoor.com right now, nice. which is awesome. Nice. Um, so you, you can also private message anyone uh, the city uses Nextdoor to uh, post things. I post for a couple of different departments, including planning. I post meeting notices, meeting agendas. I post community events. I post when there's a garbage schedule change mm -hmm. or leaf mm -hmm. pickup or like that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Anything mm -hmm. people might, hey, you know, this is going on. The police department posts in when crimes happen in a certain area or they need information or whatever. Uh, the neighbors post in. And actually, it's really meant more for neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor communication. Mm -hmm. It's not really meant for the city to be posting to people. It's meant for them to be communicating with one another. So the best posts actually come from the neighbors. When sure. you lose a pet, you can post. If you find a cat in your mm -hmm. yard, you can post. Um, you're buying or selling something, you can post. We had a great thread on there about littering and garbage uh, pickup around. It was an area around a school in this neighborhood. And this neighbor was just so tired of picking up garbage when she was out walking her dog. And she's like, is anybody else having this problem? And there was, it went on and lots of different neighbors commenting, well, yes, I take a bag and I don't know what to do. And this is where I'm finding the litter. And so it went on and on. And they kind of came together around this, this issue. And actually someone from the school district from that school was on next door saw the thread and is now saying well we as a school want to be a good neighbor too so they're working toward getting garbage cans up and letting the kids know that you know this is not okay and so mm -hmm. we're trying to work toward solving this problem and i think that's great one of the things that i like because i'm on next door also that i really like is if somebody new moves into your neighborhood too that get usually gets posted on there so you get to know the neighbors that are moving in also that you can then make contacts mm -hmm. with along the way so I think it's a very effective tool. Say there's a neighborhood and nobody's really on it yet and I'm the first one to go on to next door. How do the other neighbors find out about it? What are the ways to communicate to them? Well, there are a few ways and they're actually super easy. <laughs> um, you can, what you, so we have launch neighborhoods which are in full swing. They have mm -hmm. members and they are posting and they're good to go with the launch neighborhoods. We have unused neighborhoods, which is like you're saying, if nobody's involved yet on Nextdoor and you're the first one to sign up, once you sign up, it becomes a pilot neighborhood, which just isn't quite there. You need about 10 members to become yep. a launch neighborhood. So a pilot, a pilot neighborhood, um, you can still post and communicate and invite people. Um, and there's a great way on Nextdoor to send postcards to your neighbors. You don't even have to know the neighbor's name. You can just go and click. There's a map. You can click on their house, and it'll automatically send for free postcards to your neighbors nice. to invite them to Nextdoor. So if you ever see a postcard come in your mail, don't throw it out. <laughs> go to Nextdoor.com. You can also, if you know their email addresses, you can enter the email address, sure. and they'll send an uh, invite that way. Um, there's flyers if you want to go around and hand out flyers, or you can just simply you know, in conversation with one of your neighbors, encourage them to go to nextdoor.com and they can sign up that way too. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's really easy. Sounds like Nextdoor next door is a really good communication mm -hmm. tool, like you said, between neighbors, but it also allows the city to post, you know, major happenings <laughs> going on, like <laughs> if there's a crime or all of a sudden you get yep. a snowstorm. Exactly. Okay, we're going to have a snow emergency to mm -hmm. let people mm -hmm. know. And what's nice then is it can let, you know, notify them on their personal devices and whatever. You don't have to be home on your computer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think the other nice thing where 
I think sometimes Facebook got out of control as well as Twitter is, you know, all the advertising and all the no right. the, the noise, so to speak, or, you know, okay, here I am watching TV, you know, I'm sure next door you don't really care about that right. type of mm -hmm. stuff or whatever, you know, as far as blogs, it's a good tool, it sounds right. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, and I would say it's probably the preferred tool because there's so many social media sites that are out there. Which one do you pick and use? Mm -hmm. Well, and you know that you're talking to your neighbors. Yep. You right. know who you're communicating with, and mm -hmm. I think that's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one of our last questions before we wrap is, if somebody wants to know where to go to to learn more about neighborhood associations, to get information, what are some good resources they can go to? Well, they can, they can go on the SNP website and they can get information there and who to contact. There's also in a toolkit on there with samples, the things that they can uh, look at. They can go to the city planning website. Um, they can go to the police department website. Um, they can also contact personally one of us that are on SNP. Um, they can definitely attend an SNP board meeting. Mm -hmm. They're open meetings, so we welcome people to come at any time. And we've been talking about a more effective way of getting that notice out to people. Um, they can come to an MNLC meeting, um, and as a matter of fact, our next meeting is next week on the 20th at 6.30 at the library, so people are welcome to sit in there. Or the, probably one of the, I think, the best ways of doing it is they can contact someone from an established neighborhood already mm -hmm. and talk to them how they went through the process, what they're doing, what's worked, what's not worked, and then, you know, to move that process forward. So there's a lot of different ways you know, that people can get information and that we have a lot of information out there and we're continually working to add more and to update mm -hmm. what we currently have to make it more user-friendly and easier for people to really establish those neighborhoods. Sure. Um, Nancy, is there anything on the city website, planning website that can yep. also yes, for yep. courses? Mm -hmm. If you go to planning and development, you'll find a neighborhood tab to click on and you can go and you can see which neighborhoods mm -hmm. are associations you can view there's links to their websites sure. there's also a toolkit where you can mm -hmm. find all the examples mm -hmm. that diane's talking about the bylaw examples the meeting agenda examples there's also my contact information okay. and you th can feel free to contact me and get okay. and learn more and the city of sheboygan's website is www.sheboyganwi.gov and the snp website is do we have the address for that sheboygan neighborhood pride dot info dot info wonderful well, I'd like to thank ladies for um, being on the show and talking about the subject. I think it was very interesting. So, thank you. Um, Diane, Diane, and Nancy, <laughs> again, thank you for your time. Uh, this, I think this was a great opportunity. If you have questions about you know, neighborhood associations and like to know more about it, or if you have a question, um, please drop us a line on our website at www.wscssheboygan.com. For Quality of Life, I'm Dave Augustine, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.